Good afternoon and welcome to Women on the Front Lines this afternoon. Uh, I am so excited to be receiving you and hosting you this afternoon. And uh, this is a show that we have developed to showcase women leaders across Uganda and their works across Africa, I mean East Africa and their works. And of course, uh, also a space where we are inspiring more women to step out in leadership, to leave the comfort zones they are in, to step out in leadership, but also to spread out for those that are still stuck in some spaces, to spread out as well as inspire women that when we get these seats, we must be able to use them to transform society, to transform our lives as women. And that is the purpose of this program. We are here on every Saturday, every Saturday, two to three, I'd like to invite you to join the discussion on your YouTube channels, your YouTube handles, follow, like us, comment, and let's get this discussion started. Let's build this movement of women leaders in Uganda, women leaders in East Africa and across the Great Lakes region. This afternoon is very exciting. We decided to, to give this afternoon just to the young women, young women leaders, at university level our show is about leading women leading and today we are having young women leading at universities i think we want to have a cross generational dialogue and this is very exciting so that we have learning lessons across board and inspiring many to spread out the statistics are not very good ladies you're welcome Thank before you. i go into the detail i want to welcome my guests and uh, my name is Monica Amoding, your host. And uh, with me on the program today are two lovely young women who are leading at university, who are aspiring to become national politicians and also careerists in the different spaces, but uh, uh, as leaders. And so um, I'm so delighted to have you two. <laughs> Thank you for coming this afternoon. Thank you. And uh, it's a chat, it's a conversation. We want to pick your minds as senior women leaders, we want to also engage with you and inspire with you. So we are going to dedicate some shows, some programs, some conversation to young women to hearing your voices. In our time, in my time, some 15 years ago or 20 years ago, it, this conversation was difficult. Those who went ahead were leading on behalf of us. They had a lot on their table to achieve on behalf of women in Uganda. So a lot of times, there was a limited time to have a conversation with young women and all that. And so we are saying that these steps of mentoring, inspiring, must be deliberate. And so we must be deliberate in bringing young women in these spaces. So this space of the media, this is your space where we have decided that these young women must come and we hear their voice. So I would like to welcome you. Um, this is uh, a Romrach, a Romrach fancy uh, Sheila. And uh, she's going to be introducing herself and uh, briefly uh, telling us about herself. What are you doing at IUIU <laughs> and uh, the leadership? Okay. How are you impacting that university on, on the issues affecting women? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Monica. Hello, uh, dear viewers. My name is Aromorach, fancy Sheila. And I'm in my final year, final semester pursuing a bachelor's of laws degree at Islamic University in Uganda, Kampala campus. I have been a leader uh, from, I think, <laughs> birth. I must say for me, leadership is really... It's been your journey. Yes, yeah, been my journey. And for me, it is... At every uh, step. Yeah, at every step mm. of a life. For me, it is about being included in decision making at whatever level, at whatever opportunity. Mm. But... Uh, uh, Right in my third year, I was appointed Minister of Women Affairs mm. in the Faculty of Law. Wow. And I think that was uh, a great opportunity for me to be able to uh, let women actually in the Faculty of Law for my university being an Islamic university. There are not so many women who so always many. speak up mm. or even want to take up, leadership. take up leadership. So that was a spark to another group of women to say, hey, we also have potential. Uh -huh. And I must say in the current uh, government or faculty, we have a couple of women in leadership and that's an achievement for me. That's yeah. an achievement and we are going to be discussing more of those issues. We are going to be discussing more of those issues, what young women are doing in universities in terms of transforming those uh, spaces mm -hmm. and as they are preparing into 
the mainstream uh, leadership uh, post university. Mm -hmm. I first want to welcome uh, my young sister here, Madam um, Penny, uh, po Penny Pony Pesh. Yes. <laughs> Aikoru. Yes. Yes. That is, as I think, uh, much more easier for me. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, Pen. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Thank and, you. And uh, maybe just a little to our viewers. Okay. Mm. Well, like she has said, I'm mostly known as Pesh Pony, mm -hmm. and I think I like it that way. <laughs> but yes, I'm Patience Pony uh -huh. Aikoru, uh -huh. and I'm a final year student of law at Uganda Christian University, mm -hmm. the first semester. Yes. And of course, I've also been a leader for a very long time, for more than 10 years. Wow. Within student leadership and within the education system, mm -hmm. yes, before mm -hmm. going out into the community. Mm -hmm. uh, at Uganda Christian University, I was deputy speaker of the law faculty wow. when I just joined yeah. in my year one. Wow. Yes, I dared to make that difference. And then after that, um, in third year, last year, I was voted as member of parliament for the law faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady representing. I was and that's in, a big deal in a law political school. fight <laughs> with, <laughs> with, yeah. with three other men. Wow. So I was the only lady on the on the political race. And then afterwards, the members of parliament voted me as the guild speaker. Wow. Yes. So I'm happy to be here, mm -hmm. and I look forward to getting inspired and also sharing my views on leadership. It mm -hmm. seems to be strange that uh, most of our guests. Uh, lawyers, I don't know if it is. Is there anything about lawyers? Is it the lawyers who are aggressive as women or what? I didn't identify you specifically as lawyers because mm. I'm also a lawyer mm. in another training, but uh, largely uh, my, my earlier training was in gender, uh, as a gender specialist, gender mm. advocacy generally. So that was my earlier grounding and social sciences. Then I went back for a law degree. I thought. There's a lot that I needed to do in terms of legislation for women in, in many ways. So uh, I, 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 is the, the, the aggressive attitude of a leader, is it only in lawyers or I think, uh, do you want to comment on that? Because it seems like most of the guests we've had so far mm. are lawyers. Mm. And uh, it seems maybe in your universities there are opportunities for more young people to, to stand out in the mm. law school in, in, in terms of mentorship. How is your experience of leadership at university? I just wanted you to comment on that part. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, my experience of leadership at Uganda Christian University is not specifically for the law students alone, because I think other students in other faculties also take up such spaces. Mm. Actually, I forgot to mention uh, I'm in a guild government headed by a female guild president. Wow. And the prime minister is also a female. So I think I was so excited about it. But yes, <laughs> the previous government was headed by someone who wasn't a law student. So I think it, it cuts across, irrespective of the fact that uh, most people who are studying law or lawyers mm. are more aggressive than the rest. But I think others are also very aggressive in their sectors be it in entrepreneurship, mm, mm. Uh, in the art field, mm, yes. Mm, so I mm. believe it, it just varies according to the it passion. It varies according to the passion and yeah. the individuals. And yeah. I think that uh, there are many women uh, scattered across all sectors. Yeah. And mm. we are saying we want to, to project women's leadership and see how it is impacting society because it seems we are getting a backlash right now, ladies. And it seems like um, uh, what we are having in terms of progress in getting more women on board mm. is getting a backlash because now when women um, are voted into these positions at political level now mm. uh, there seems to be a challenge and uh, people are saying this is for a women's seat you know when you go to contest in a direct seat the men do not welcome you society doesn't welcome you so going back to to the the leadership generally that we have at universities are there sufficient programs that are mentoring do you feel mentoring is happening at universities for women because this as i said should be deliberate yeah. efforts yeah. what are some of those uh small programs happening at universities that are aimed at encouraging the girl child to come up okay if we understood that then we can build on to those when you graduate uh in the mainstream leadership spaces mm. I, I think universities. Sheila should take on that mm. then i will follow suit yeah. because she has the she laws mentorship 
I think an advocacy program. group, mm-hmm. yes, and mm-hmm. she would speak more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I I really think mentorship, particularly leadership is not is something that hasn't been embraced mm. at school level or at university or whatever level the kind of mentorship that many women receive these days is towards entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and how they can run a particular business how they can develop a particular idea mm. but towards questions of leadership named uh, named unknown leadership mm. isn't something that many people have taken up and taken seriously it's just always a talk by many uh, some women leaders who would you know come when they, hey, they come in and tell us we'll we'll mentor we'll yeah, mentor yeah. but it stops at will mentor, mentor. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't actions. actually happen uh, for us uh. or they'll just pick on a lady and then that is the lady they'll mm. mentor mm. but yet we you know many a times so it's also it's 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 important to carry out the different forms of mentorship if you're going to mentor one woman i mean encourage another lady to mentor a group, a, of, a people. group of people yeah. yes mm. because but we are so many really and even as we are so many we still need the few of you to mentor us mm. and so with my idea of shield was i we are really at a horizontal level where we are patience is mentoring fancy fancy is mentoring mm. another yeah. person mm. and i think we are looking forward to having to actually having the statement of we shall mentor you actually come to life. And I seem to be seeing your mm. your teams because <laughs> <laughs> I meet your teams from different universities. The other time I had fancy from Makere University mm. and then the other. So this horizontal you're talking about is working because it is you yourselves. Yeah. Mm. And I've seen that the women, the young women I've encountered in my spaces mm. have been walking that journey together yeah. from high school, from primary, actually high school. And now you are at university. Yeah. So you seem to be much more organized and intentional <laughs> yeah, on what you, are where you want to go. So you see the we always, we, we <laughs> okay. try to mention each other's names. Like if there's an opportunity out there and I may not be able to make it for it or I can't handle that. I'll think of fancy gender and I'll recommend think of Sheila and ah. recommend them. And I think from the idea of mentorship, like you've mentioned, it's really my plea that the women leaders out there we look up to mm. should try and put some time and dedicate some time. Um, I mean, it's their busy schedules to come down and really mentor us, to give us that time. You see, you're among the women leaders out there that I actually look up to. Dr. Miriam Matembe has been my mentor mm. since my secondary school. Mm. And I think I am today because of partly what she has impacted on me. Uh, people like Council Sarah Birete, people like Honorable Anna Deke, oh, we yes. look up to them mm. so much. Mm. And with the show here of course today is basically us that are students from university Leadership, but i've been yeah. following you know <laughs> the other programs and i see the stories being told of older women i think they need to dedicate time and really mentor us because we can't be in there we can't fit in their shoes without knowing what they've gone through listening to their stories and even our aspirations cannot yield without knowing how to do it everyone really needs a shoulder to lean on, to lean on. yeah it has been said that um uh, you cannot be a successful leader unless you multiply several other leaders mm. of yourself. Mm. So mm. you must have photocopies of yourself in different places. Mm. So if I have several photocopies of Amodeng, that will then be my satisfaction. That's when I will derive satisfaction as a leader. And so I think this is a deliberate, like um, Afans is saying, it has to be a deliberate effort yeah. in terms of uh, mentoring. And that brings me to where we are, where we met. Because at Akinamama, I think Akinamama has been doing a lot of mentoring. Most of the women leaders in the women's movement, mm. those that are impactful, that have made tremendous contribution in African countries, directly have some link to Akinamama. Mm. So you have been just completing um, a mentorship program with Akinamama. And uh, I believe that uh, through that program, you were given basics in mm. terms of the modules of, 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 of general uh, class training or leadership coaching or leadership training in mm. one setting. Mm. And uh, I don't know, maybe if you'd like to just share one or two things because there's something that I'm trying to develop mm. and drive you towards. Okay. Uh, but I know that, as Fancy has said, there are stages of mentoring True. and there are processes which we have to engage. It is not just a one-off uh, uh, intervention. Mm. And right now, as the women leaders, the senior women leaders, we are designing programs that are supposed to intentionally follow through young women and young leaders. 
and specific activities, specific area of mentorship. By the time you conclude that process, be it six months or one year, usually one year, you'll be a complete person well ready packaged. to take in, well mm -hmm. packaged. Mm -hmm. But also then you can take on other forms of mentoring later based True. on the area of need yeah. that you have. I'd like you to share some of those areas that you got inspired in, in uh, Akinamama, Akina mm -hmm. Awili, the Young Women Leadership Training, and then maybe we move on to another area in terms of learning, mm -hmm. and then the, the gaps that you maybe got, what you picked out most, what transformed your life in that training, but also what are some of the areas you still need to be supported around your leadership journeys. I think that's very critical. Yeah. Because I know Akinamama is not just in Uganda, it is in Kenya, it is in uh, different countries on Nigeria, the East African and, you yeah. know, across Africa. So even if we make reference to them in this discussion, it is a bigger, a bigger issue mm. across the region, yes. True. Mm. Well, uh, I'm currently completing the, the cohort of Akina Mama mm. of this year, and I must say it's a very worthwhile experience. Most of these opportunities, I get them through older leaders, like the women that have been there before us. Mm. And also my peers, Sheila here, shared with me a number of them. Oh and my. trust me, the internet, <laughs> <laughs> the internet it's full of them. Nice. It's full of opportunities. Yeah. I don't know, the young people out there should really take up such I, opportunities. Uh -huh. When you go on the internet, I think they should be able to, to see the opportunities there and take up. They should... They mm. should become zealous mm -hmm. and, you know, take up those spaces. Yes. So this Akina Mama Fellowship or the cohort that I am completing, I've learned one majorly about uh, transformational leadership, mm -hmm. how to be a transformational leader. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, in simple terms, a transformational leader is one that is going to change the status quo. Mm. The status quo has been that. I get something for something. something. Yes. I will not give you a free vote. Uh -huh. It's transactional. transactional and that politics. so many leaders. Leadership, yes. Even me, I'm about to share that probably in the next <laughs> question. <laughs> I totally feared. I didn't want to stand for leadership in my hometown. At all. Because I was like, where do, will I get all that money to fund my campaigns? But Akina Mama Fellowship has taught me that I can actually change that status quo by also sharing what I've learned, like I'm doing now, mm -hmm. on such opportunities when I'm hosted to speak. I have to keep preaching about transformational leadership. Mm. We need to change mm. the narrative mm. and vote for leaders mm. who are able and vote mm. for those who will actually speak for us mm. as opposed to someone who just has the money yeah. and will sit in parliament for mm. five years and not say anything. Mm. Yes. Mm. And then the other thing was also about advocacy, mm -hmm. how to create a good advocacy plan as opposed to just speaking without having a strategy what is your objective in other words what is your what is your objectives yes where do mm -hmm. you want to be uh -huh, or what yes. do you want to achieve on behalf of your people exactly in two years in three in five or even ten years yes. so your advocacy plan must yes. be very because clear. you're not going to just come and maybe write a letter to the president or to ministry of health and you're like <laughs> we want free where pads. We even get <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> we want free sanitary pads to girls in the rural areas okay where are you coming from where are you heading what what is your audience hey. yes so i learned that and i think that has changed a lot about how i now approach different things i must say i'm actually working on a sexual harassment policy for uganda christian university oh. yes under the office of the guild speaker that is the transformation yes. you are producing e yes, output exactly wherever you, you are in yes. terms of the space you're occupying yes yes so i think it's really helping me a lot because now the way you're going to see my policy is totally different from how i had started it earlier <laughs> that's what I we went... call feminist <laughs> leadership i went and Some edited people, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Pony seem to be uh, uh, misunderstanding the, the whole mm. topic of feminist leadership. Exactly. They think feminism, feminist leaders mm. are these leaders who are not good women, they are True. controversial, mm. they are, you know. With the myths around mm. them. Yeah, and they don't seem to understand that what we are talking about as feminist leadership is transformative leadership. True. That when I am a leader who believes in transformation, who believes in gender, equity, gender mm. transformation. I must have an output on behalf of women. Yeah. And therefore, I, I qualify to call myself a feminist leader. 
who is going to a space that I'm mm. in to bring about change on behalf of the women. True. Yeah. So you front I, the yeah. women's agenda. Yes. 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 Mm. And I think we learn a lot from such spaces. Apart from also Akina Mama, I've been a fellow with a forum for women in democracy oh. earlier this year, wow. and even Center for what for constitutional governance. Last oh, yes. year we had the civic space training, mm. and I think all these spaces have never left me the same. The same. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really amazing. Yes. Fancy. Yes. What was outstanding for you? But I think she has also brought out the other mentorship spaces. Unless yeah. she has left out some. Are there any other uh, spaces that we have right now in Uganda, across the region, that, you know, we want to grow the movement of mentorship mm. and we want to grow the movement of women leaders. So it's very important discussion. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, I think there are a number of spaces and I want to really... Uh, send my gratitude to all those spaces that are working so much hard to make sure they they walk with us mm. this whole struggle mm. Mm. and i think one of the spaces i am in currently is a uh, kriya it's called kriya is the organization that is running it alongside femfort wow. so they're running a women's gaining ground project for the next five years mm. and uh, one of the biggest things uh, that we get to learn is uh, african feminist leadership Wow. Which for me, you know, it carries a lot, a lot. in it. I'm like, okay, where have I been all these years? I needed this like five years back. You know, and before you continue, <laughs> yeah. before I went for gender studies, when I went to do a, a degree, a master's in gender studies, mm -hmm. I had never really encountered all these gender discussion, the issues of socialization, yeah. why we grow up the way we are, why mm. women don't speak out. <laughs> mm. When you go to a meeting, you want to sit behind. Mm. You don't even want to step out to be a leader. So until I went through that class, I could never understand myself. I wouldn't have understood myself. So what you're talking about in terms of feminist leadership is very critical. Feminist uh, ideology mm. and the things that we learn and unlearn Mm. are very critical and i wish that every man actually or even every woman learns these modules and goes through that process of unlearning sure. maybe you could share some of those things as you make your submission that you also unlearned mm. learned and unlearned oh, that. So many. yes i think every day they told us feminism is a journey mm. yeah. and i think every day you get to learn and unlearn mm -hmm. and appreciate a new perspective mm. but one of the biggest things we have gotten to appreciate for the past two trainings is the concept of identity mm. identity and intersectionality mm. how do you appreciate someone's identity how do i appreciate my religious identity mm. today we had a special i just want to bring the conversation a little different we had a special uh, class on uh, feminist jurisprudence in my domestic human rights class mm. and that and the space my class is a pretty misogynist class okay. so it is it the is, law is <laughs> yeah and then yeah. I, so after the class i was like are these the lawyers we're about to have yes. and yet everything at this moment mm. we are looking at having a feminist idea in tax justice, mm -hmm. in uh, in health, in, health. In, in budget drafting, in, the in literally everything. everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But then we are yet to, you know, have lawyers who mm. are still. I found that space very gender restrictive. Mm. Yes. yes. So yeah. that mm. is so. In that, I got to right now. I, you know, the energy I respond to my <laughs> class these days about all that is really different. After I got to understand that, yes, the identities. And there are a lot of fundamental, you know, effects that come into Paris, the region, yeah. yes. and then culture. So it's it's a journey. It's one step after At a time. time. Yes. It takes so time for people, people to appreciate. Yeah. So unmanned. I think for me that's the biggest thing. I get to appreciate people in their space, mm -hmm. but then I grab my ideology and still stick it in your space mm -hmm. for you yeah. to be able to appreciate. Mm -hmm. to appreciate but even yeah. at the end of the day, really, we are all here struggling. We are living a life, mm. but the truth still remains. A woman doesn't have to actually prove her existence mm. and you know say that i am a girl child which means uh ideally the boy child is like you know how they i i find naming someone saying she's a girl child i mean i'm a child i'm a child i'm a child i yeah, don't have to be human. my a girl gender. child exactly mm -hmm. it's not important <laughs> exactly mm. what is the difference it's just my you know the sex you know yeah male biological female, biological, biological. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, identity you know names everything mm. it helps us carry on mm -hmm. and unless you appreciate me as a woman mm. you are not going to make the best decisions thereafter so for me that that has been mm. the outstanding thing for me mm. for the past two trainings we have for had. the past two yes. trainings so yes. 
I can see that the, the trainings have greatly impacted you and, uh, and uh, perhaps also one of the things that you can share with the young people that are watching today is the importance of having mentor, mentors. Some people yeah. say mentors or mentors. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it is very important because um, uh, in, 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 in this growth of life or path of growth of leadership, there are people that inspire you mm. and in, in the way they do their things and they appeal to your heart. And uh, I think that uh, is a, a conversation we need to have with all young women out there that Yes, it's important to have a mentor. Mm -hmm. And if you identify that person, you should be able to take a step and I, you know, ask them. I have so many messages in my inbox of mm -hmm. young women who want to be supported <laughs> and grown. Mm -hmm. And I have to always say yes, because I think it's a, it's a calling. It's a very important mm -hmm. thing yeah. that I must do in my time now. And um, yeah, I, I would like you to share with the young people that are watching, the young women and even senior women, because mm -hmm. you know, you come to a leadership position and somehow you don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. There are certain things, certain mm -hmm. skills a leader must have yeah. to be an effective political leader, to be an effective uh, executive director in whatever office that you are in. Mm -hmm. And yet we seem to be, uh, you know, some, some women may have a gap in those areas. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for somebody to, to have a mentor? And maybe you share with us also your, 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 your mentors. Who are the people who inspire you, who help you, who are growing with you? And you know, a long life, they may even change. You may keep changing because based on your need, yeah, you pick yeah. up a new mentor true. because I That's need an true. area. Right now I'm in media. I've never done media before. <laughs> <You> <laughs> now I have one. people who are mentoring me. Okay, mm, Monica, media. this is how you do a, a show, <laughs> or a talk show and all that. Mm, and yeah, you pick up those kind yeah. of things. So for me, my mentor is uh, Honorable Ogwal. Mm. I have been mentored greatly by the Speaker of Parliament, outgoing Rebecca Kadaga, Miriam Matembe, in many spaces we, and several other sisters, uh, Pia, mm. the, the what you call horizontal, and then the other the vertical. vertical. Mm. There's a vertical, <laughs> the horizontal, we have so many peers in yeah. civic and, you know, civil society, and also outside Parliament, I have. But also in Parliament, there are those, you know, political leaders we have at the same level. So what is your take on those that conversation? Well, uh, on mentorship, as young leaders or even young people out there who might not be leaders, I think it's important to seek guidance. We live in a world where there is so much to contain. You have to choose between what is right and what is wrong. And you might not easily see that if you do not have an outside eye to mm -hmm. it. If you do not have a one Monica you're going to call and you're like, I have this thing I'm writing for and I don't even know if I should send my application now or later. So Monica will say, do not postpone, send it immediately. Mm -hmm. I think that's already an act of mentorship mm -hmm. and guidance. Mm -hmm. So to the young people there, we can't, we're not islands in this world. Yet. Yeah. So we really need to rely on people and it's important to have mentors. Uh, I know for now we are really all in the legal field, but even someone out there in the art world, you can get, if you're a musician or you love singing, get someone within that line. Mm. You're an entrepreneur, get someone within that line. Mm. Uh, we have seen so many women really giving themselves out so selflessly to, mm. to mm. mentor people. Mm. So I think it's very, very important to seek mentorship. And then to the women in leadership positions, uh, maybe the ones that are already there, uh, as opposed to standing, maybe you've won the elections, yes, you're happy and everything, which is very good. Go there and strategize for the women at mm, large because mm. when you're done with leadership and you sit back home and look or at you're your retiring output, yes. and you look at your output, what are they going to say of you? Mm -hmm. When someone goes into a village and they're asking, have you heard of Honorable uh, Amwading or what? What, have, what, what has she done? She done? What has Who she left she? behind? Yeah. I think that should be really the passion that should drive us because it is really what drives us, the mm -hmm. young people. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm still a young leader, but I also mentor a few people below me. Mm -hmm. They come to me and they're like, patience, I need to stand for this, or I want to go for this. And at least we're creating a chain of young, yes. intentional Joyce leaders. Joyce Banga, mm -hmm. our senior, the other day said that when you occupy a space of leadership, yeah. You should leave one door, one leg at the, you remember what she said, you should leave one leg at the door <laughs> yes. to be able to allow other women to come in. And I think that's very, very powerful. Yeah, that that's the point you are powerful. trying to make. Exactly. Mm. Because now for me, where I come from, my hometown is Koboko district mm. and the woman MP outgoing, 
uh, or the one that uh, Baba Diri. Yes, when I about Baba Diri. Well, I wanted she, to host her. Sure. Yes, yeah. she 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 has also mentored me a lot in leadership, and she's among the women who keep saying you have to push forward even wow. after school. You have to do stuff for the community. You have mm. to do things for the youth mm. and at least push for it. So I think even if you do not have the money, I don't think mentorship is financial. It's not like Unless you're going to you give pocket to money every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has some little bit of because I have to take someone out for a couple. Okay, yes. And you know, yeah. but yeah, that kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's really there. But yeah. okay, the bare minimum. Mm. Yes, I think they need to look back. We are out here. Very many young people are asking. So many of our peers are asking who want to be mentored. Who want such spaces? Of course, they are there and. I partly blame my generation. Sometimes mm, we get mm, lazy and do not mm. want to apply Look for special for yeah. and opportunities. Yeah. But I know that feminists or the women that have come after us are not monsters. Uh-huh. I know they are very kind people. Perfect. And it's my plea that you, you keep your phone open for us to really call you wow. or at least text you because very, it's, very it's the digital era. I would like yeah. to speak to a young woman, young leader out there. There yeah. are opportunities of mentorship. Very Inbox many. us, let us know, uh, you know, find a way of communicating. Through these videos, there are many spaces where we can mm. link up. So we are trying to reach out to every young person, wherever that we can, especially young women that are intending to join politics, to join leadership, to join any space of influence in our community. We are taking intentional steps right now mm. in terms of spreading out, and stepping out from affirmative action, whatever it is now, <laughs> is not bringing about the effect that we want because yeah. we are stuck at 20%, between 20 to 34, 30, yeah. based on the administrative increments that we get in our country. So right now there's a movement that wants uh, us to, you know, champion. We need to talk about how to get more women out, spreading mm. out in different leadership positions. So. Uh, young people that you're going to meet in different spaces, let them know mm. that there are opportunities and they need to reach out. Now, um, Fancy, I know that as young women, there's always something that you are very uncomfortable with in your society. And you're like, if I am in that space, if I occupy a presidency one day, oh, there's man. one thing that I want to do. <laughs> if I ever became a president, I will not say it here. <laughs> <but I'm just laughs> <one. laughs> Even if oh, I, I was on it just for... Uh, a month that would be my first <laughs> policy to make but yeah. i will not discuss it here <laughs> okay, today yeah. so what are the issues what are our current challenges societal problems societal challenges and what what is a societal challenge is a leadership challenge true because then if it is a societal societal challenge then it is requiring leaders to, to come and yeah. find a solution mm. to it so what are these millennial challenges that we have in your generation in our country right now that you think you can speak to, that you feel you are uncomfortable with, that we need to deal with soonest. Even in, in the East African, you can even stretch it beyond this mm. region. What are the, the issues? And I think then if we have that conversation, discussing them means then we are having a public discourse around yeah. them. I would like you to address the, the, uh, the national challenges, but also in our movement as women, what are those issues that we need to focus on as young leaders okay yeah so national level really mm. i think there is so much every single day there's a lot that keeps happening to the detriment of us young people or to the detriment of a particular marginalized or a named group of people i think uh, during this particular unprecedented time the biggest challenges that for me i've seen that have cut across are issues to do with the sexual reproductive health and rights wow it's been it's, a perennial problem. Oh my God, mm. that, that that breaks my heart every single time. There is, uh, you know, there are statistics being, you know, named mm. on television, over the radio, or in any article, and mm. it's terribly alarming. Issues of teenage pregnancy, mm-hmm. issues of rape, mm. the rape culture. Mm. It's, it, mm. it's it's like it's just growing, mm. and if we are struggling mm. here, mm. you know, telling people not to rape this girl. Mm-hmm. So or issues defile. of defi- yes. yeah, rape or defilement. Mm-hmm. Issues, issues literally around uh, not a woman not having to make a right about how many children she would love to have mm. or mm. not wanting to use a contraception or things like that. Mm. So I really think that during this particular time is a great national concern. 
which actually drives to all other concerns because if i do if i cannot make decisions about my body yes. as mm-hmm. a woman as or a as a woman. boy mm-hmm. you know or as anyone mm-hmm. then i will not have the capacity to make a decision about the household mm-hmm. about the community about anything yeah. thereafter yes individual autonomy mm-hmm. the bodily integrity and mm-hmm. autonomy yeah shapes the other yeah it yeah. will shape the rest of, of the things that, yes, that you make my decisions so even as that then we step on to the concern of education it's unfortunate that we are struggling to learn virtual studies during a time like this mm. we wouldn't have struggled if it was not during corona times but of course it's a great national concern that we are all affected teachers are affected the students themselves are the worst affected the schools are affected parents are crying mm. day in and out mm. and then i also think uh, concerns towards uh, economic rights or economic justice, growth yeah. Yeah, yeah economic justice mm. those mm. are big concerns patients did mention how much you know you would need to run for a particular political party yes and that is a cry to many young people many many young people that they cannot actually afford and yet they are capable they have all the ability they have the drive they have the zeal passion wow. they have the numbers wow. but then but there's this person with dollars <laughs> who will just Money buy bucks. the numbers exactly <laughs> but then i have the honest numbers to get mm. people to actually mm. vote for me and then i lead them forward but then coming to uh, the women's social movement but I, it's a big problem in africa oh yeah the issue of monetization of elections right now is a really big, big yeah. concern you're seeing what's happening in kenya and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, all countries that are undergoing elections across the mm. regions mm. the issue of monetization has yeah. become a concern and i'm glad you're making a point yeah. about that very yeah. true even yeah. in even in even at school <laughs> <laughs> i think actually start at school, <laughs> that school people campaign. keep saying. exactly <laughs> i'm told even at primary level children <laughs> have to give out sweets but the school where my son that. goes mm. somehow prohibited everything oh, concerning because it had become too much mm. the parents had to print posters <laughs> my like son came and told things, me wanted to contest uh, as a prefect and i was like now aha uh-huh. <laughs> now he said i need posters mommy I, i need sweets i, I need to... <laughs> And I'm Shut. like, ah, uh-uh, come on. I don't think this is correct. This is the time for that. <laughs> Shortly after that, the, the administration wrote letters to parents and said we are not going to entertain anything like gifts giving and all that. So, mm. I think there is some little bit of concern that mm. we have gone way beyond oh, the yeah. normal, you know, acceptable, you know, levels of electioneering. True. You are still trying to make some some contribution oh, yeah. in that. So coming to the women's movement or yeah, women's social movement, I think concerns which we started with the com- which the conversation started with issues of mentorship. Mm. I think mentorship should be should really be a daily bread, should be something we appreciate because if Monica 10 years from now you may not want to be in that space. Mm. So it's it has to be someone like me to yes, step into your space not, yes. but if you didn't tell me things about this and this and this uh-huh. how am i going to nail it the way you nailed it in that space yeah, you know. how am i going to continue with the legacy mm. so mentorship shouldn't be looked as an expensive thing as uh, a tiring thing every time you know this yeah uh, this youth will be on your case on your line <laughs> and you're like oh my god oh my god for me that's the imagination when i contact no, when i dm yeah there are exactly. women who are going to help I, you i, I, I find it so tough that i feel this person is like i'm bugging them and stuff because they, they wouldn't respond easily yeah. mm. of course they are security measures digitalized world so they may be afraid of a pseudo something you know i've contacted them with different ideas but i think we should embrace mentorship it's a, it will be the solution to all the problems that we are actually facing in the social movement yeah. issues of expertise i would need i would need monica maybe she actually can speak out this issue or she will guide us to petitioning parliament yeah. for mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. but then if she's laid back she's, she she always falls her hands to listen mm. to patience and fancy then we are not making a move mm. yes yeah, so for me the biggest uh, mm. thing that we are actually facing right now, yeah. as a social or a women's or a feminist movement, movement mm. is the question on can you mentor mm. can you can can you support each other i mean sisterhood is the thing <laughs> mm. for me sisterhood mm. you know, mm. at whatever strength and whatever yeah. um, <laughs> is the thing yeah boni mm. aha uganda how are you seeing uganda uh uganda i will speak for the youth mm-hmm. i think 
in addition to what fancy has spoken trust me it's not funny looking at the numbers adding up on teenage pregnancy mm. and what not mm-hmm. and i'm sure the people in authority know what they're doing and probably are going to find solutions to that the major problem we have faced has been monetization of literally every sector every sector before you enter an office do you have an sector. appointment mm. and it's worse because now for us we are young mm-hmm. so first of all the oh. age is not authoritative you know yeah. you walk in an <laughs> office oh, and they're telling you it's vip only mm-hmm. or it's no you're too young mm. or they're telling you no you don't have, you don't you don't have an appointment so you move out they are so rude to us mm. and i think that limits a lot of our potential because it's not that we want to take up your spaces or what but we want to work together we want to, want to make the world a better place mm. so the whole discrimination of age and body size and i don't know height or color is unnecessary wow. <laughs> nationally so even like i said the political bit the monetization that you've said is really rampant in africa mm. i think in uganda it's my plea that they actually reduce the nomination fees mm-hmm. for youth mm. so that mm. we can have a bigger platform because uh, th- let's assume I'm standing for National Youth Parliament mm, or something. Mm, there is mm. so much money I will need and probably at the age of by then maybe 25 or 27. I can't raise that money unless I come from a very rich family. Or you're working. Exactly. Oh, or even God. even <laughs> someone who is working might not be able to raise it, yeah. which is unfortunate. It's like they're deliberately pushing us out of those civic spaces, which is already shrinking, mm. and yet we are mm. trying mm. to show passion and cause towards it. Yes, yes. Then in the, in the continent or regionally, I think still it gets to expenses and um, the youth participation, inclusion of youth. I'm so happy that actually today you have invited us, the young leaders here. I mean, I'm it so already excited shows about it. I was like, why, why don't I'm I don't I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> why should I really look out for the senior leaders exactly. only? And yet we only, have mm. a conversation of leadership. You know, mm. they are leading leaders at different levels. I yes. Think, yeah. It's, it's mm. amazing that you've given us such a platform. I'm sure so many out there will watch this and mm. will keep saying, yes, there is hope. We are indeed mm. the future generation mm. or the current generation. Mm. So youth participation, you find their panels where they're saying they we're talking about youth inclusion in this and that or in climate change and the panel is full of older people. Of course, no offense, it's okay to have older people, but if you're looking at the audience you want to reach out to and the theme or the topic is youth participation, then look out for the youth. I don't think all the youth are uh, out there sleeping. I think they're those who really want <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's always that there one. There's always one. Yeah, yeah, there's always one or two, or at least they're there who will take up. There's so many, trust me. So, that participation to those out there that are watching, probably the ones that have come before us mm. or the ones that are there with us now, it's amazing to involve us in this. We want to work together, we want to bring ideas. Mm-hmm. In Koboko mm. district, mm. I usually come up with an idea and I share with the organization leaders. I tell them, I think we can have such an activity. It will bring women together and youth, and they like it because probably the older people are too busy to think about creative things in the 21st century, <laughs> but they have all the mentorship and the brain mm. to okay. guide us. Yeah? I think we are doing so, very well. It's uh, amazing. You know, it's, it's very amazing yeah. to hear voices from young people. You, you actually don't want to stop. Mm. But uh, um, uh, one of the things that I want us to address is uh, before you become a leader, there should be something always pushing you to come into leadership. Yeah. That is what every leader must know. What is it that you're coming to solve? What is it that you are asking to be given opportunity to deal with finding solutions, finding a solution for whatever challenge society has? And that requires also understanding the society you want to mm-hmm. lead, understanding the history the current challenges, the problems. Mm. So that's why we have this conversation usually as leaders. What is our African problem? What is the East African problem? What do we need to deal with in, in, in this region of the Great Lakes? What is the problem affecting the Great Lakes, for example? So each of, each of those issues in mm. Uganda, we also have the current problem that we are dealing yes, with. And yes. we, as leaders, we must be able to find um, uh, that footing and understand that what we are dealing with is this, and therefore, in this season, in this time, these are the challenges we have to address and uh, provide leadership for. Mm-hmm. And I would like us to come back to that conversation again. Uh, I want us just to get a small break and then return to that conversation when we come back okay. from that break. <laughs>
welcome back our dear viewer. We are having girl power discussion here with young women leaders at university level. We said we shall not leave them behind. We have to engage young women along the journey of leadership so that we can have an opportunity to multiply. Multiply women, multiply leaders and grow leaders in this space. So occasionally we shall have a conversation with young women like we are having today and I think I'm enjoying it. We are learning many things. We are cross learning yeah. and cross pollinating. <laughs> And uh, it is vertical and also <laughs> horizontal. horizontal. And that is what we did not have when we were growing up very, very closely. But now there's a lot of effort trying to have this conversation. Mm. And so even just being here, having this discussion, is very critical. Yeah. And I want to thank you so much. And our viewer, join us in that conversation in trying to mentor uh, young people, but also growing young leaders, having them engage in this conversation of our challenges as countries, as a continent. And of course, they are going to be engaging with these issues in the near future much more at a national level. So they need to begin confronting these issues and dealing with them and preparing our strategies because they are the leaders of today, but also more importantly, tomorrow, they'll be dealing with these issues. So mm. we were still having a conversation, a fancy, about the African challenges. What are these things we still want to continue having this discussion because as you grow into these leadership opportunities, you must be able to understand the problems that you are having because you cannot know what to do or you can't find a solution for a problem unless you know where its history is coming yeah. from, where it is coming from, where we are at and where I would like to go. So as leaders, this conversation is very important. And also as you go through the training, leadership development and all that, these are questions you are asked always. What are the African challenges? What are the Great Lakes challenges? What are Uganda's challenges? Mm -hmm. and, and how can we be able to engage our governments, first of all, those who are in leadership positions, to address them? And then what can we do in the nearby future as well as leaders of tomorrow to deal with this conversation? So uh, those challenges. So that's the conversation I would like us to have as we wind up. Mm -hmm. So Fancy, uh, can you maybe take the first in that oh, yeah. direction sure mm. so uh, this year's uh, youth day mm. uh, our theme was in line with food insecurity mm -hmm. and i want to say all the conversations that happened around the world and particularly african continent mm. there is a lot of food insecurity that we are facing as countries oh, yes. as a mm. continent mm. either because of whatever reason basing on a particular context mm. of a particular country mm. but that's a very big concern because yeah. food is your first line of defense absolutely but if you're not eating a healthy mind. exactly <laughs> <laughs> you are oh, going to lose it as a young person a yeah. as the children mm. young people as leaders as as anyone really yeah i also think insecurity apart from food insecurity we have uh, a general problem of security as you know as a country as great lakes region as uh as whatever group of people, there's a lot of insecurity in line. You know, we, we continue having riots here, mm -hmm. young people rioting in Nigeria yes, everywhere about right the brutalities now. that are happening. Riots are going on in South, mm. in Sudan. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of conflict Sudan. in the Great Lakes region. Mm -hmm. yes, so right. all this that is towards, uh, you know, people's safety, we know, we very well know safety is not fully guaranteed. Mm. You know, security is not guaranteed, mm. but we need to embrace the little that you know we can mm, actually mm, be given mm, as mm. as young people without security yeah. there's no development exactly as well. mm. and then we also have concerns of health which if i'm not healthy definitely i'm not going to contribute mm -hmm. to economic growth yes. of the country mm. i will not be able to go to work i'll never be able to go to school and yet mm. five years i need to be in the labor market mm. and that is also a great concern mm. the employment challenge is another so what are you challenge. concerned with the mm. health sector really I really think uh, one is questions of uh, how our health sectors are structured and how much is actually given to the health sectors to support the whole community yeah, at yeah, large. Yeah, yeah. If we're still giving, if uh, the laws... I think it's in, right uh, now 11% mm -hmm. for Uganda. Yeah. Yeah. If the African does laws does down. 
mm-hmm. give us a percentage of at least 10% of your budget mm. or a particular financial year into the health sector, but then you find a particular country giving less than 10%, mm. then that is not going and to... And yet we need over 15% mm. exactly. according we need, to the Abuja declaration. Uh-huh. So yeah. we need really more than what is actually in place. Mm. We'll continue having medical workers steal drugs like mm. we've been hearing mm. in the news of late. <laughs> steal drugs. Drugs which are supposed to be for us and then you go to the pharmacy and they're telling you, go buy it, go buy it, and yet you actually have it in your quarters mm. as medical people. Mm. So mm. concerns as such you know continue to bring the so many insecurities and people fail to actually contribute yeah. and yet we have the capacity to contribute to the development of a particular country wow yes mm. so even uh, issues of uh, the employment challenge mm. wow that mm. one that mm. is mm. a Do challenge you know that we wake that up to every day hundred <laughs> young women are leaving the country for example uganda but it's happening across the region yeah. mm-hmm. 200 on a daily basis are leaving the country are leaving the country at the airport, at the yeah, airport that's the, the statistic yeah. we have going to work as maids abroad in, as in united arab mm. emirates and other middle east countries yeah. which mm. becomes a detriment to us as a country mm. because all these young people that are leaving we are living they are living with all the potential with all the brains that we would have had you know mm. back here in our country and mm. it will delay development mm. for the country for the continent because they're not living they might a few might be living still you know to go to african countries but the majority are living to an asian country mm, wow. european country mm. and we are losing as a continent mm, at the end mm, of the day we'll mm, still mm. be saying we are the backward continent mm. and, and the, the blame will be on us out. who are there right it's now it's migrating yeah. mm-hmm. labor issues so yeah. you find there are so many challenges that you know keep coming mm. unless we actually appreciate what is there right now we use we make use of the resources right now we make use of the energies of the young people mm. we shouldn't be looked at as a homogeneous group because we can actually coexist with we're having a discussion with you and we have different you know different yeah. generations <laughs> yeah. and it's actually very meaningful and i think that should be something that should be encouraged yeah so for me those would be like the, the top more top problems yeah, challenges that yeah. we are facing and which will mm. continue you know, breaking down our development, all the energies, because there are so many energies towards development. Sure. Mm. But if we continue having these challenges and we do not face them aggressively, wow. we will mm. continue facing them. Mm. Mm. Very interesting conversation, young yes. leaders. Yes, Pesh. Yeah, some of these issues, mm. we need to reflect. It's until sure. we begin reflecting on them, then that we can, you know, take steps at individual levels, mm. but also in our advocacy yeah. efforts that you talked about. Mm. Mm. So more on the challenges yes, or the solutions as well. You can blend them. Okay, mm. well, uh, f- I really loved the theme for this year's Youth Youth Day. Mm. And I must say the basic solutions that I've thought of, or if I were to be in position of leadership, probably together with my peers mm. and mm. the people of our generation, is that we need to have, you know, the youth make up a big percentage of the population right now, in yes. Africa. Yes. Not mm. only in Uganda, but mm. in Africa at mm. large. So I think when we have a patriotic co-leadership within the different nations mm. where we involve the youth and the entire citizenry in in leadership uh, planning, in government planning, in governance, that will solve a lot of challenges of being left out. Because when we think together, great minds put up together really changes a lot. And then the other thing is capacity building mm. for job creation. Before you leave that point, sadly, yes. uh, the numbers you are giving in terms of the actual population of young people across mm. the continent mm. and even you know in, in different countries mm. around us here, we are uh, the numbers are very high yet mm-hmm. the participation of you young people mm, in less. politics in leadership is only at 12 percent uh and uh those below 30 actually are at 24 i think mm-hmm. percent uh, uh less than less than that so i think the statistics are not so good yeah but generally for youth it is less than 12 percent in national level actually yeah. now now that you've talked about that the challenge that most youth really face in participation i think uh the 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 environment surrounding the participation mm. i mean what is driving them the motivation a bit towards mm. it we have mm. already talked mm. about monetization of all these sectors mm. so most of them fear they're like okay i have no job i have no sustenance how am i going to handle this mm. all the brutalities engaged in all these the laws that are there, which mm. will also bring probably the solution of, I think the laws should avoid being ambiguous. Mm. They need to be straight up. They need to be 
brought to the layman's understanding. language is yes, understanding mm. uh, and those they have to be dynamic laws keep changing mm. we can't have laws working in the 21st century that were in the 20th years mm. i think a lot has changed and we need to have shock responsive laws because now with the pandemic trust me africa as a continent as has tracked. faced a lot we it. have realized mm. we have seen our vulnerability as a continent because we were never shock responsive mm. for the pandemic mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can move on to the other solution which I was talking about of capacity building for job and wealth creation mm -hmm. that will solve uh, the employment issue among the youth the and the citizenry. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We need to adjust. Okay, yes, we are colonized and there's a lot we are following. <laughs> yes. Do you even but, know that word? <laughs> when did you last year of it? We started it long ago. I know. Ooh, we, we had about the scramble and partition. <laughs> and it's funny how we keep, okay, it's important in our history, but yeah. it seems that as leaders, we are stuck so much in blaming colonialism yeah. up to now. Then finding a solution. You know, yeah, in this We have millennium. brilliant leaders in Africa. But we trust, are failing exactly, to find the right trust solution. Trust me, we look up to so many older leaders yeah. and us as young leaders, if we are given the opportunity to be there. Uh -huh. You know how education has been so theoretical. I'm happy the government is making so many changes in education. But if we make it more practical to fit the needs of Africa today, wow, a lot will change. We have so many resources. We have people coming up with technology every day someone is sharing and you're like wow would i even think of this in the next world no mm. so we need to give them such a platform mm -hmm. engage we have the national youth council mm. currently headed mm. by mr jacob beyeru i ah. think they're doing a lot mm -hmm. in uganda mm -hmm. especially with youth participation mm. and tanzania has recently been having talks of having also a youth a national youth council of its own. Oh, they don't have one. They do not have one that Whoa. is fully built, yes. Mm. So if African countries could actually have this, because we've already mentioned how the youth are more into this. So when we engage them in this, we have the co-participation, the capacity building, engaging them in government planning. And then also the, we need to uh, maybe... Uh, the leaders also probably listening into this mm. need to work hard into the integration of the East African ah. community and Africa at large. It's so absurd that we travel to Why an African is that country. Important to you, young people. Uh, it is important mm. because it, it limits our capacity if we do not have an integration as a continent mm. or as a region. Mm. When I want to travel to Ghana for a seminar mm -hmm. or for a convention to mm. learn mm. and unlearn what I had in my country, mm -hmm. it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And yet we are Africa. Mm -hmm. as a, I think we should have a, 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 a lesser fee for our travels, probably even if it's by bus or by flight. Oh. It shouldn't be so expensive, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. In our classes in human rights and what we have had... Uh, challenges where we talk about how it's expensive for some organizations or individuals or even states in low developing countries to travel and give reports the universal periodic reviews wow yes and that is really a lot so we need to work on that we need to agree come to terms as african nations and understand that we have these resources we have our roots and irrespective of what has transpired before we need to work hand in hand and as leaders and young leaders today i think we need to embrace that so that should be your visioning exactly. that should be your visioning the young people now yes. the ger generation that is with us right now mm. uh how we can expedite and see uh the integration yes. come to fruition yes because there are benefits there are benefits attached mm. to coming together as countries and of course the challenge is that mm. not much is known about it and i'm impressed that you young people are, are very up to speed with what is happening and why it is important yes. because not so much dissemination is happening around that integration and why it is important to talk as at this level <laughs> the horizontal <I> of countries <laughs> you know in that conversation so i i, I want to thank you uh, Tim, and i know that the talk here is about inclusion mm. of young people yes. inclusion of young people the future of uganda this region and Africa mm. is in inclusion of young people yes. in all decision-making processes, inclusion of women, mm. because those two, two big populations hold up those countries. They so if they are lot. engaged, mm. a lot can happen. I want to thank you, but I'll, I, I still want to pick a few thoughts from you in terms of your hopes. This one is always a question I have to ask uh, my guests here. <laughs> yeah, because as leaders, what are those things that we would like to see happening in the short term? But we've been mm. trying to talk about them uh, back and forth. But uh, in, in just one, uh, two or three you know, minutes, 
what our hopes are in terms of uh, our last comments uh, to the viewers uh, that are watching us today. Your aspirations, what are those things that keep you waking up every day that you want to contribute? That fancy says, if I get the opportunity, <laughs> this is it. This yeah. is what should be happening. Yeah. Yes, those are some of the last thoughts that we can have and then we can call it a day. All right. So mm. uh, as a pastor, uh, my biggest, uh, what I find life in is advocacy for women's mm, rights. Mm, mm. The know that a woman doesn't have to, you know, prove herself more than already she, she is, is a woman. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But then also my aspirations revolve around two major things, mm. responsibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. I look forward to having an everyday where, uh, for example, someone from National Water will come and do his role, check mm -hmm. my water bill mm. and make sure I have water so mm. that even if I am in my menstruation as a girl, mm. I'm actually able to keep my menstrual hygiene upright. Yes. So that level where I can wake up every day and everyone is actually being Doing responsible their part. Yeah. and accountability mm -hmm. is as easy as never before. Responsibility mm. and yeah. accountability. Yeah. Everyone so for, doing their part. So that's what I look forward to. Yeah. Everyone being responsible and accountable. And for me, that starts with letting women know that they actually have the cap the ability, mm -hmm. the capability, mm -hmm. the intelligence. Mm -hmm. They are like, they're co-creators really. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so th that gives them the utmost, uh, the utmost capacity to step up in whatever opportunity, be included, uh, say things when they actually need to, things that concern them, be a part of decision making mm -hmm. at home level, at school, in a classroom. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't say something every single time. Your voice mm -hmm. is like your first uh, point of power. It's the strongest power that if you don't have it, you've mm -hmm. lost yourself mm -hmm. in yeah. this world. Mm -hmm. So I really look forward to those major two things as a young person, as a young leader and yeah. Of course, you are concluding yeah. by agreeing mm. that women are important in yeah. every space. Every, mm. You are emphasizing the fact that women must be in every space mm. and their voice must be heard. Yeah. And that's why in this space we want to say, we want to see more women. And uh, because we've seen the impact of women in uh, these spaces over the 30 years, Uganda has specifically allowed women to participate. And we're saying that we want to spread out and mm. add more, more women leading more women contributing, yeah. more women uh, building our countries wherever we are. Mm -hmm. We believe that the development that we are talking about, if more women are participating, then I think that development will be expedited mm -hmm. in our various countries. Mm -hmm. Much better. Yeah, mm -hmm. much, much quicker and faster. Yeah. Yes, Pony. Well, for mm -hmm. me, uh, mine have also been within that line of leadership and women empowerment. Mm. So I must say that I would be so happy to see a zealous community, one that is highly engaged in civic space, mm -hmm. participation and nation building. Mm, mm, uh, nation mm. building is that in whatever state you're in, at least let us all participate in whatever little bit of thing you're For doing. For the good of our country. Yes. Mm. And to those in leadership, of course you have voted, you campaign to us, so do not lead like you are forced to be in those mm. offices. Yeah, and then I also <laughs> must say that all leadership really comes from God. So whether bad or good leaders, I think they are there for a reason and we need to learn from them and probably work <laughs> hand in hand. Bad yeah. So some bad leaders, <laughs> is it a punishment or ah, what? I think they are there God so that we can bad learn leader from to punish them. Or something. Yeah. No, for us to learn from them and probably make things differently or to, 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 to actually to shine light on the good part so that we can make a difference between the two. Oh. Yes. So uh, my aspirations, we keep joking and I keep telling her I'm going to be the UN executive director. Wow. <laughs> 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 Sometime to come. But really, I think we need to be zealous. We need to participate in nation building mm. in whatsoever thing we do mm -hmm. and, and be accountable to people. Yes, we you make a good point of do. nation building, and yeah. that's a fundamental issue. It really Some is. people may not understand what we are talking about mm. in terms of nation building. Mm. But nation building means each one of us contributing in whatever exactly. way we have to deal away with what is wrong in mm. our country yeah. at that time to make sure our country improves and goes to another level. Yeah. Knowing the fact that our countries are still growing 
uh, in their levels of democracy, mm -hmm. engagement, and participation, lawmaking, yeah. and all that. So you make a uh, yeah. very fundamental yeah, that, that is it. And mm. maybe the, the quote I learned recently was, nothing for us without us. Mm -hmm. So if you want something to be in place, there's a question of, if you think your leaders are not doing enough, what are you also doing for mm. your community mm. as well? Mm. So it really still revolves around that. And I think there is no office that is very difficult unless you hold it. Oh. So when you're out there and you're being like, hey, that MP is being too lazy, what? you get into that <laughs> office and also feel it. It's easier you to feel talk. The, <laughs> you feel the heat. So oh, I think you. I really appreciate the leaders that have been there before us. We are following, probably critiquing and also appreciating. Mm -hmm. But when we also get there, I'm sure, however good leaders we shall be, mm -hmm. there will still be people that will critique us. Mm -hmm. We shall still be fighting with the law. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot to do. With the young people then. With the young people, that's why in now. That is what we are going to fight us. So must it's know a whole that there will always sequence. be yes, yes, it's a sequence. <laughs> History <laughs> repeats itself. <laughs> there will always be a critique about your work. <laughs> but yeah. what should you do? Should yeah. you strive listening to uh -huh. the critique or you do? You'll be you stand fast, fast and, know what and you're doing. focus on your agenda yes. and mission and purpose for yeah. which you are with, leading. With a good I think that's a very important yeah. point to end at. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you so much, ladies. You've been a very good audience. <laughs> the last show that we had, it also ended with nothing for us without oh, wow. <laughs> us. And that show was about persons with disability issues okay. generally. Today it's about youth issues, youth leadership, mm. youth participation, youth Young inclusion. Women, I think yeah. you make mm. a fundamental point why we need to increase our you know, involvement of young people. So mm. this space is good and uh, I know that we are going to host more young people here and uh, you have not disappointed us. The young people have issues and they know how to communicate because you have just done that. And yeah. they know what to do, what has to be done. And yeah. they know what the problem is. And so we just need to open up and uh, give more opportunity. Platforms, yeah, Platforms to our young people, wherever they are, in whichever country that they are in, in Uganda here, in East Africa, in Africa. So there's nothing without us, uh, for us, without, without us without involving. Us, yeah. Yes, I want to thank you, our viewer, for being uh, with us up to now. We are going to sign off, but before I do that, I want to thank um, our partners, uh, Center for Constitutional Governance, uh, Great Lakes Institute of Strategic Studies, that is a, a think tank, a research in the region, a research organization in the region, supporting, you know, uh, reflecting on important issues affecting our regions at such a time as this and providing solutions for leaders so that they can, you know, find uh, ways of um, addressing these challenges. I also want to thank um, our, our hosts here at Apartments, a very nice place, quiet, cool, by all standards, very beautiful for hosting us. And of course, you, our viewer, for being with us here. Follow us next time. Uh, and follow, uh, you know, share our pages and like us and continue to join this discussion. It's going to be bigger conversation around these issues over the coming years and months. Uh, we want to sign off and thank our viewers, Fancy and Pony. I hope you will come back another time. Thank you so much thank for being you. very agile young women. I know the sky is not even the limit for you. A few years from now, five <laughs> years, ten years from now, we shall be meeting and celebrating and saying, wow, yeah. see how far God has brought yeah, us in this journey of leadership. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, we want to stop at this for today. Uh, continue the discussion on our channels and we shall see you next time on our next show when we bring you another inspiring person. Shalom.